and we're recording. Today, I think it's March 3rd today, I am so happy and pleased, you guys. It's, it's March 4th. It's March 4th, thank you. <laughs> to introduce to you my friend and colleague, Bill Remack. We're going to read a short bio and you can read his long one after. And you know what? I really would like you guys to Google Bill Remack because he has, he just does so many things for, for patients and the Hep C community. But he does, he is also a scientist and a patient advocate. He is both the founder and on the board of several organizations. And one thing I'm super proud of him for is he's also volunteered and served with the U.S. Coast Guard for 27 years. That's huge. So again, for a full bio, you can Google him, Bill, R-E-M-A-K. And so, I would like you first, Bill, to please tell us a little about yourself. Well, thank you very much. Um, Petra, I, um, I have a background in public health as well as uh, biosciences, and uh, I, uh, I'm also a patient, a patient, a hepatitis patient, I have chronic liver disease. And after a number of years uh, working in the medical field and life sciences, uh, I did, decided that it was time to do something for patients themselves. And since I'm also a patient, I felt that more of a focus was needed to address the issues of uh, the disease I have, but also multiple diseases because nobody has just one condition. And so wanted to uh, address those needs. I was um, passionate about the issues of cancer uh, because my, my mother was afflicted with cancer. And, and in fact, I, uh, I also was. And I have two siblings that also suffered from cancer. And so uh, I felt it was really important to uh, focus on the chronic disease conditions. Uh, and, and so that's what uh, I went into. Uh, right. I made a career change and decided to do something about that. All right. And so let's go right back to the beginning for a moment, Bill. When did you first contract hepatitis C, do you think? I, well, actually, I was diagnosed with chronic liver disease when I was a young teenager. Right. Which, which is, what? how old were you? 14, I believe? I was 14 years old, yes. And did you even know what that meant then? Did you know, did they know why your liver was, was diseased? No, it did not. Okay, and how, how did you learn it? Did you end up in the hospital? Yes, I, I was hospitalized. Right. Uh, I had a high fever, and uh, they, they told my parents and myself that I was uh, uh, suffering from an acute uh, inflammation of the liver, wow. and they called it chronic persistent hepatitis. And I was quarantined um, and, and given a lot of antibiotics, and, um, and nobody could uh, come into my hospital room except the nurses and the doctors that were attending me. And then, I know the audience doesn't know yet that you've been through liver transplant. And before I ever forget, I would like the audience, please, to become donors themselves. I know that in Canada, and I believe the U.S., you can clarify for me that you can be a donor even if you have hepatitis C, because a hep C liver is better than no liver, and when somebody gets a transplant, they still have the virus. 
So I really want, I'm going to put a link on there for you guys to make, or you can do it online, you can become an organ donor online. It's very simple, one page application. All right, so when did, how long a span was it then, Bill, from the time that you were 14 till your first liver transplant was needed and why? Well, I was, um, I was 43 when I was told that I would need to have uh, a liver transplant. And I was then also diagnosed with cancer. Liver cancer. Yes. Right. And how, how long did it take you to get on the list and get a donor? I mean, it took me a couple of years, actually. A couple of years to, uh, to, to actually, uh, first I was evaluated, right. then I was placed on the, the list, and then there was some waiting, uh, waiting period until a donor could be found. And were you really, really sick prior to getting the donor? Yes, oh. yes I was hospitalized uh, prior to, to my surgery. Tell us a little bit about how you felt when you finally received a donor two years later. Because a lot of people don't ever receive a donor, unfortunately. Well, I was, I was elated. I mean, after, after the surgery, prior to the surgery, uh, yeah. yes, I was a, a little bit nervous, but uh, very confident that everything went well because I had a great deal of confidence in the surgical team right, and, and in the hospital where it was. And so tell us, after the transplant, what went through your mind? Like, did it even register? It probably didn't even really register at first. Well, that, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I, well, I, you. Uh, first of all, um, uh, number one, I was very ill. Yeah. And... After I regained consciousness and still quite groggy, groggy and, and somewhat sore and, and, um, and under some sedation, mm -hmm. um, however, I could feel I was no longer uh, ill and in that weakened state, even though I was quite sore. And, and, and very tired because it's, it's rather traumatic and evasive surgery to have a liver transplant. Absolutely. <laughs> Somewhat the mother of, uh, of surgeries, it's rather, uh, rather extreme. Yes. Um, but slowly but surely, I, uh, I had an enormous amount of energy and uh, a sense of well-being. Uh, because the the difficulty I had because of being in liver failure and even having some kidney difficulties, uh, those those uh, really had were, were now gone. So it was a, a tremendous feeling. I, I felt twenty years younger. That must be amazing yeah. to all of a sudden feel so much better, even with the aches and pains. That must well, be amazing. It, it, it wasn't, it, it was, you could say, it was somewhat sudden, I guess, from after waking up from the surgery, but um, certainly I had the full effect of that, certainly within several days, yes. Right. That is very amazing. Now, Bill, take us a little farther along in the timeline. What happened after your first liver transplant? How, how long were you okay for? And take us through that just a little bit. Well, I, I recovered fairly quickly. I, I was released in a week after the, the first transplant. And within just three or four months, I was well enough to feel that I could go back and work. Wow. Um, so it was rather remarkable. Um, however, 
Um, getting back to the issue of the hepatitis C itself, even though I was now had a new liver and I was free of cancer and so forth, um, that is uh, hepatitis C is a bloodborne disease, and we're still in my blood. Yes. So after 13 months after my liver transplant in 1998, uh, I was then uh, put on the treatment, which I had done before that. Okay. So the combination therapy I went on, um, uh, the whole idea was to see if it would work uh, after the 48 weeks. Uh, what I what I didn't know was that I would repeat that treatment um, for a total of six complete forty week treatments because it it wasn't working and they kept me on the treatment in the hopes that it would um, it would eventually clear my <laughs> my uh, the disease uh, from my body and I would have a, a a sustained viral response. But, uh, that, what, what did happen? What did happen was it um, it did not clear, but it uh, it reduced somewhat significantly. Um, however, after the the six complete treatments, my the disease actually had um, come back and was destroying the liver, I went into liver failure and had to have another transplant. So by 2007, uh, I was transplanted again in, in April of 2007. And that's when you ended up in emergency and needing an emergency liver, correct? Sure. Yes. And so what happened with your second transplant, Bill? Well, there was there was some difficulty, and my recovery uh, took took uh, significantly longer, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and I had some some serious difficulties, um, and and actually went into uh, uh, had my heart stopped during the surgery. So. Uh, wow. They had to revive me and uh, and then continue. How long did your heart so, stop for? Do they know or? Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure for how long, but they did have to. Uh, they did have to do uh, to to resuscitate me and and uh, a charge charge my heart. So. And when did you find this out, I guess, after the surgery? Yes. Because you were under... Days after, after uh, when I was improving. What? Uh, I believe I had three surgeries follow the initial transplant. So it sure wasn't like the first transplant. It was way it was. different. And yes, it was. How did you feel when you found out that you had actually, your heart had stopped on the table? Did, did, I can't even imagine, and I know it's happened to my mother too. Did you see anything or hear anything like they always say? Well, I, I was in a <laughs> coma know? for a number of days. I yeah. was in a coma, and when you're in a coma, you have, you, you can have dreams or experiences. Yeah. It, and I, I do recall I had, uh, I guess I had the, the some dreams, and, and I do remember them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as far as a lot of emotions connected with it, uh, I was happy when when I was past that, and eventually uh, out of ICU. Yes, yeah, so I was very happy. No. I think that I I think the the best feeling was actually when. The breathing tube and the feeding tubes and all those were removed. So that was that was a big milestone. Oh, and, and eventually, I recovered 
and got my strength back. But it took a significant period of time, months, months, and um, and uh, I I had some atrophy and so forth, mm -hmm. and then had to have uh, physical therapy until I was strong enough to to literally walk and and and, and do things and. and and eventually, I was I was discharged. Uh, so, having gone into the hospital in the first week in February uh, of 2007, uh, I was discharged at the end of August. So, uh, I spent some time there. Right, and. Bill, have you ever found out anything about your donors, or were you curious about your donors? For I, I actually, I actually did. Um, I learned a lot about my my first donor. Unfortunately, I was not able to connect with my second donor. Uh, but it it was quite uh, it was quite a very exciting situation that I was very appreciable to to meet uh, the spouse of my uh, my donor oh, wow. and to thank the family and meet the children and actually meet eventually the grandchildren of my donor and wow. I'm still in, in contact with with them and uh, it's it's a wonderful relationship. I bet. That, that's amazing. That is just amazing how many people get two liver transplants and go through what you've been through and do what you do every day. I, I don't know how you do all the things that you do because if you guys look him up, it's amazing. He's an amazing fellow. Bill, in closing... What is it? What is the most one important message that you would like to share with our YouTube audience? Well, I have to tell you that when you have a chronic condition, and it doesn't matter really what it is, uh, sure, it's a struggle, um, and, and one is always hoping that eventually they'll be able to resolve the condition uh, but but even if the condition is not completely resolved, if one can regain a, a quality of life, which which uh, one can then experience the joys uh, and and still reach the dreams that they have and uh, the enjoyment they have with family and friends, um, to to just keep pursuing whatever course of action will allow them to do that because it's very well worth it. Right. And uh, I think the, 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 the sad part is when people sometimes feel it's too much and they give up. And I, I think there's so much happiness and um, success in, in today's world with healthcare and and because they are pushing the, uh, the 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 bar raising the bar in terms of what can be achieved through medical technology that uh, and science that that um, uh, one one can have a really wonderful quality of life and uh, experience wellness and happiness and it's very worth. Uh, working for and continuing to survive. And that's what you're doing because you still have the hepatitis C virus as well. Yes, I do. And you, I know, work hard and you enjoy your life and you have a big family. <laughs> very blessed. You are a very, very blessed man, Bill Remack. And I'm Thank happy and honored to know you. Thank you, Petra. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for spending some time with us. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.